hello everyone welcome to another tutorial in this video we will learn how to create complicated uh, three-dimensional objects in Comsol multiphysics i thought why not make a cricket bat in Comsol multiphysics as the world cup is going on so this is the two-dimensional work plane that we will create to create this model okay and the way we will do this is just focusing on the work plane to first create the best structure by creating a curved line in work work plane as you can see and in the other work plane we'll create a straight line then we'll use another work plane to create a rectangular box and then another work plane on the other side in a similar way then we'll use a special feature in console to create the connection between the two work plane as you can see here and to create the solid geometry and we'll use the mirror feature to mirror the object and we will add a simple cylinder that acts as the handle and this is how we get the geometry and we can add fillets and minor features to make it more realistic so these are the zoomed in version of the top and bottom portions so this is what we will be creating today so let's jump into the tutorial and see exactly how to do that hello so we are back in Comsol multiphysics and we have created a blank file now the first thing we have to do is we need to add a 3d component because we are going to make the model in 3d so we'll click on 3d now in the 3d geometry we will first focus on different work planes as we have discussed in the initial introduction of how we are creating the geometry so we'll go on to the geometry and add a work plane now there are different settings and stuff in the work plane but we are more interested in making our geometry so i'll just focus on that so the first work plane that we are working is in the xz plane or xc plane and the y coordinate i'll set it to 0 0.5 okay now in the plane geometry in the sketch we can draw a quadratic curve so to do a quadratic curve you generally make like this kind of a curve and right click and click on finish and then you can drag to make that particular curve okay so i'll just show you how to do that but i'll delete this for now and in the work plane i'll go and click on quadratic base here and I'll have this window now since I already did the geometry I'll try to plug in the values just to get exactly what I got in my geometry okay so I'll just plug in the values of basically the X and Y coordinates such that uh, you get exactly how it looks in the introduction video so these are the points the three points one two and three and this is the weight and i'll click on build selected and i have this curve so this is the first part of the work plane now we will have to add another work plane to do that at first uh, we'll again go to geometry and we'll add work plane so you see that the second work plane is also added now here we'll again go to the x z plane and the y coordinate will set it to zero so now if you see that this work plane is uh, at x uh, i mean y equal to zero and that was at y equal to 0 0.5 now in the plane geometry again we'll do the similar stuff that we did we'll draw a quadratic bezier again and then we will just uh, have the curve so we'll again go on to the work plane and then click on quadratic bezier and then we'll add the values so i'll just write 0 0.2 here since i already have the values 8.4 0 0.6 this is 10 and I have 0 0.2 and I'll click on build selected now I have these two curves okay 
I'll close this work plane. Now again, I'll go into geometry and again, I'll add a work plane. Okay. Now, since we have four, four work planes, so we'll basically add four different work planes in our model. Now, this work plane is in the YZ plane. So we'll select in the YZ and in the X coordinate, we'll write zero and click on build selected. Now, if you see that this work plane is basically the perpendicular along the other two edges. Now, in the geometry, what we'll do, we'll just add a rectangle. Okay. So we'll go on to the work plane and click on rectangle. The width will set it to 0 0.5 and height will set it to 0 0.33. We'll click on build selected. Let's see how it looks. So we can just click on build selected. Now we need to move this. So this will be minus 0 0.13. Now, if I click on build selected, now you see it is moved at the bottom. Okay. So this part is done. That is the third part. Now, again, we need to add another work plane. So I will add another work plane in the model and we'll again do quite a similar job here. So we'll again add the YZ plane. And here I will set this to 10 because our this length is actually 10 units. Now I have the work plane on this side and again I will add a rectangle. Okay. This rectangle will also have the dimension that was similar. So this is 0 0.5, 0 0.33 and then the y was minus 0 0.13. And now we have this kind of a thing that we actually showed in the introduction section. So we have this four work plane. The first work plane was the curved line. The second was the second line, basically the second curve. The third is the initial point. The fourth is the final destination point that will make the curve. Let's actually make the special feature that we are interested to do now we'll use the loft feature that is actually very less talked about feature but quite powerful so we'll click on the loft icon here it says loft 2d section into 3d geometry object okay now there are a lot of stuff here uh, but it will take quite a long time to explain each of them so what we'll do we'll just uh, use the feature that is necessary for us. Okay, so in the start profile, we'll select this work plane. So this will act like the starting point of the 3D profile that we are creating. And we'll have to select the end profile. So the end profile will be the end work plane. So basically it will start here and it will end here. So these are the two profiles that we need to select. Now there is one more settings that will be useful that is the guide object. So these are basically the curves that will guide the 3D object. So we can select the two curves here. So just to recap, we have the start profile, we have the end profile, and then we have the guide objects. Okay. So these are the two and the three settings that we have. Okay, so we are done. Let's click on build selected. Now, after we click on build selected, we have this 3D object that is almost ready, right? Now we'll use the mirror feature to mirror the 3D object. To use the mirror feature, you can go on to transforms and click on mirror and you can select the input object. Now, you can mirror via different axes and direction. But uh, here what we can do, we can just mirror along the Y. Okay, so I'll click on zero. So if I click on keep input object, then you can see that 
uh, the mirror is actually not right. Now to fix this, we'll change the point uh, on basically where the reflection will occur and we'll click on build all object. Now we have a nice uh, 3D shape that we actually wanted to create. Okay. Now what we can do, we can add a scale if you want to scale the geometry or something. Uh, that is something that we can do and then we can add a cylinder or the handle to it. So I'll just quickly add a scale. Maybe I'll just make it smaller. So we have this. And now we will add a cylinder. So I'll click on cylinder icon. And then we can just add it. So since I have the values, I'll just write it as the radius and height. And I'll write the X and Y position. So in X position, I'll just write the value and in the Y position, I'll write the 5 centimeter and I'll click on build selected. Okay, it looks like it is rotated. So I'll write this as in the axis type, I'll write this as X axis. Now you can see that our geometry is almost done. Now to make it uh, more realistic, what you can do is you can add fillets in your geometry. It is quite easy. For example, if you go here and you click on fillets. So let's say I want to add this and I want to add a fillet of 0.001 meter. So it will basically add a curvature to this. So I can just increase the fillet and it will have this kind of a uh, structure. So you can always select multiple sides at once. Then it will have a more realistic curvature to the geometry. So this is how you create this kind of a uh, geometry in console. Uh, if you don't use the loft feature, it may be quite a tough job to do this. So you can play around with this feature and get some interesting results. So this is how you create this kind of a geometry in console. If you find it difficult to understand or if you have any doubt, feel free to comment or reach me out and check the description for the official blog links and stuffs and also my resources. And also do subscribe to this channel if you found this valuable and useful and that is basically the best way to support me and help me to create more work like this. Thanks for watching and have a nice day ahead.